Good morning, Fort Washington Collegiate Church. It gives me some sadness to be preaching to you here from my living room and not from our beautiful sanctuary on the hill in Washington Heights. But it also brings me great joy to be able to connect with you in this way, in this collective virtual worship experience, knowing that in so doing, we are connecting with God. Would you pray with me? O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Friends, most of us have been shut up in our houses, in our apartments, wherever we live for some time now, some of us over a week. And in that time, being deprived of the physical presence of one another, of that physical contact with those we love, and even just being around people, especially for us extroverts, has been very difficult. It has been disorienting, confusing, and in my case, frustrating. I like to go out. And for the parents among us, this I believe, and I have been told by many parents, that this has been an especially trying and difficult time. For those who have been able to keep their jobs and are working from home, that stress of working from home while also caring for your family and doing the whole remote learning thing with your children has got you going from morning until night without a break, and it's really leading some to a point of desperation almost on a daily level. And then for those of us cut off from parents and elderly loved ones who are themselves shut away in their own apartments or their nursing homes, and we can't go visit them, we can't hug them, we can't be with them, the worry is immense. And then there are all those for whom this crisis is exacting an even more serious toll. There are the workers who have to choose between, on the one hand, going out and working to put food, on, put food on the table, and on the other hand, staying home and staying safe and potentially not catching this life-threatening disease. There are the doctors and nurses who are making the difficult decision every day to put their lives, their very lives and safety on the line to go into hospitals and medical centers and treat and save the sick. And then there are those prisoners in our prisons and our immigration detention centers who know that at any moment, or it might already be happening, this disease could strike and it could spell certain death. And finally, there are those who have already contracted this dreadful virus, this illness, and tragically some have lost their lives. This moment, this crisis, is impacting all of us in ways that we don't even understand right now, in different ways for everyone in every community, but there is no doubt it is affecting all of us. We're all impacted. And one of the ways that I believe it is impacting us, all of us, in, in a similar way, is that we are all experiencing this underlying sense of unease, anxiety, and dread. This sense of, we don't know what exactly it is, but it's got us tense. I know I'm feeling this because, you know, I, during the day, I feel like I put on a pretty bold face. I smile, I feel positive, and I've embraced the challenge of having to create church in this new way, and it has brought fruit. But I also know and I confess that at night, sometimes, I haven't been able to sleep. And I stay up with this, this nervousness, this tension in the pit of my stomach. I can't sleep. The Harvard Business Review says in an interview with David Kessler, one of the foremost experts on grief, that what we are all experiencing right now 
is something called anticipatory grief. That means grief not only for that which we have lost, but also for that which we are going to lose. David Kessler says, anticipatory grief is that feeling we get about the future, what the future holds when we are uncertain. Usually it centers on death. We feel it when someone gets a dire diagnosis or when we have the normal thought that we'll lose a parent someday. Anticipatory grief is also more broadly imagined futures, more broadly imagined futures. There is a storm coming, he says. There's something bad out there. With a virus, this kind of grief is so confusing for people. Our primitive mind knows something bad is happening, but you can't see it. This breaks our sense of safety, says Kessler. We're feeling that loss of safety. I don't think we've collectively lost our sense of general safety like this. Individually or as smaller groups, people have felt this, but altogether, this is new. We are grieving on a micro and on a macro level. And so for all of us, our existence at this time has become like the dry bones in the famous passage from the prophet Ezekiel. And the prophet says, The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? Mortal, can these bones live? People of God, my brothers and my sisters, my siblings in Christ, I know that at this moment, our life together has become like that desolate valley. We are worried and we are unsure. Some of us have lost jobs. Others have lost lives. But we all have lost something. We are far from God. And we feel like those dry bones in a barren land, parched, inert in the desert. And God has come to ask us, Mortal, can you live? Mortal, can you live? And so at this time, I want to invite you, if you're watching, all who are watching, to close your eyes and pray with me. Close your eyes at this moment and hear this prophecy, hear this prophecy that was written and given for you. O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones. I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. Beloved, Hear this, pro this prophecy and know that it is, it is for you. I invite you to keep your eyes closed and follow me in this guided meditation, in this guided prayer. People of God, people all over the world, we are lying in this empty valley together. Picture this valley with me, this valley of dry bones and hear the mighty noise that the prophet describes hear the rattle and clack of our bones as they come together look around you in your mind's eye and see the miracle of sinews and flesh and skin that come upon us 
come upon those bones in the desert. See the skin in so many beautiful hues of the people of God. Hear the words as of the prophet as we call upon the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Ven, Spiritu Santo. Ven, come. Hear and feel the mighty rush of winds that come from all four directions. The flood of wind that is the Holy Spirit. The breath of God as it washes over you cool and still like a mighty river, hot and warm like the heat from a fire, a campfire at night. Feel the breath of God pour over you, pour into your soul, and hear as God commands you to rise, stand, and live. Beloved people of God, God has asked us, mortal, can you live? And our answer is yes. Yes. Yes, there will come a time when we will be free to go outside in the street and shake the hand of our neighbor and breathe that fresh air and embrace one another freely and without fear. Yes. There will come a time when the schools will open and parents, you can drop your kids off at school and be free. And our children will run and play in the schoolyards and we will all have a few moments of peace. Yes, there will come a time when we will go back to work, when we will again embrace our elders, our beloved elders, and when the churches will again ring out with song and prayers and preaching and shouts of hallelujah. There will come a time when the hospitals will open, will empty out, and when the dead will be buried in peace. That time will come. And until that time comes, we have to have patience. But we do not have to wait until that moment comes to live again. We don't have to wait to live again. We can live again today because we can connect to God at any time. Through our prayer as we have just done in a collective guided meditation, through contemplation, through confession, through acts of love, we can always connect with God. Remember, this is the gift that we have as people of faith, that we believe and we know that God is never far from us, even though it might feel that way, we always can connect with God. So remember that no matter the desolate valley that is around us right now, no matter what dry bones we have been reduced to, no matter like that what the prophet says, because what the prophet says is that we can always call upon the Holy Spirit and the breath of God will find us, will knit us back together, and will make us live again. Amen.